Hello, and welcome to another quick Marmoset tool bag video. In today's tutorial, we will explain how to use the depth of field inside of Marmoset tool bag. Let's begin with the scene. We have a character and some simple lighting. Note that we are using ray tracing. If you don't have it enabled, go to the render menu and enable use ray tracing. There is a sky element lighting the scene and one blue rim light. To enable the depth of field, you have to go to the focus section inside the camera settings. Here, we are going to use the ray traced option. As you can see, the image is completely blurred. This is because the focal distance is too close to the camera. You can adjust the focal distance using the slider. You can pick the focal point with this icon here to be even more accurate. Let's click here and then click on the viewport in the exact area you want to set the focal distance. In this case, near the eyes. Remember that the focal distance is the distance between the sensor or film inside the camera and your subject. Now, we can see some blurring in the ears. Let's increase the blur amount by changing the aperture. Using this dial, we will decrease the value, making the depth of field shallower. If you go further, around 2.8, the effect is stronger. Let's go back to a value of 4. Because we lost some of the rim light brightness, I will increase the intensity slightly. To make the depth of field even more noticeable, I will add some elements in the background. I created a few small spheres in Maya and imported the FBX into the scene. As you can see, I disabled the depth of field for now, so we can see the difference. I'm using an emissive material to make the spheres very bright. Let's enable back the depth of field. Immediately you can see the bokeh caused by the spheres. If you go to the aperture drop-down, you can change the shape of the bokeh. There are many shapes you can choose from. From the standard bladed aperture to some unusual shapes like stars, bubbles, or hearts. The depth of field also affects the sky texture. Here, I will select different sky textures from the library to demonstrate how the background is also out of focus. If we disable the depth of field, we can notice this lamp in the background. When enabled, we can see the nine-bladed aperture in the bokeh. Finally, I would like to discuss the anamorphic bokeh ratio. When anamorphic lenses are used in real life, the image is squeezed horizontally, making the bokeh a vertically shaped oval. Here are some examples of oval bokeh in movies. These first two screenshots are from Heat. This one is from Batman Begins and Mission Impossible 3. We can emulate this oval bokeh by increasing the anamorphic bokeh ratio. Here is the anamorphic trademark, a vertical oval. If we take a look at the references, you can't see the blades in the bokeh shape. So, I will change the aperture type to circle smooth. Now it looks closer to the reference images. If we decrease the value, it will have the inverse effect, making the oval stretch horizontally. That's it for today's video. Here is the final render. So, thank you for watching all the way to the end, and please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to see more content like this. Thank you and until the next time.